What's up Smart Homers, my name is Aaron, and in this video I want to show you a project that I've been working on recently where I turned my Home Assistant Yellow into wall art. A few months ago, a company called XReArt reached out to me to see if I'd take a look at one of their products and show it in a video, but it's not a smart home product and I didn't really feel like it was worthy of an entire video. However, it did inspire me to do the project that I'm going to show you today, so I told them that I'd show you guys the inspiration for the video. XReArt takes new and retro tech, disassembles it, and then mounts it inside a frame, turning that tech into wall art. The one they sent me is the original Game Boy in a frame, which is super cool because that was one of the first pieces of tech that I ever owned as a kid. I think it looks great hanging on the wall and every time I look at it, it reminds me of the fun times we had playing Tetris and Mario and all the other games. The only thing I think it's missing is some edge lighting, which I may add in the future. And that brings me to today's project. My plan is to mount the Home Assistant yellow in a frame, I'm not gonna disassemble it, and then edge light it with WLED. So the supplies you're gonna need are a WLED controller, a power supply, a WS2812B LED strip, and a shadow box frame. There are a couple other things that I'm gonna use along the way, but I'm gonna link them all in the description so you can check them out there. For a controller, we're going with an Atom high power controller that supports individually addressable LED strips. I showed them in my first ever WLED video and I still think they're one of the best options out there because they're an excellent plug and play alternative to a D1 Mini or a Node MCU. These require no flashing, which is really a barrier a lot of people face when they first wanna try out WLED. For an LED strip, I originally started with a WS2812B strip that had 60 LEDs per meter, but later on I opted to change to a higher density strip that has 144 LEDs per meter. The reason why I switched is that the higher the density of LEDs, the more even the lighting is, and although 60 LEDs per meter is fine for this project, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of density. We're also going to need a power supply, and as I've shown previously multiple times, you have to size your power supply based on the number of LEDs you have and what type of LEDs you have. We're using about one and a quarter meters of LED strip for this project and at 144 LEDs per meter, we're looking at about 180 LEDs. WS2812B LEDs use 0.06 amps per LED, so we're looking at a total of about 10.8 amps. I'm going to use a 15 amp power supply for this project because it's going to provide more than enough current for what I need, but you could probably get away with an 8 or a 10 amp power supply, provided that you turn on the auto brightness limiter function in WLED, which I'll show you. For the frame, we need something that's deep enough to house the Home Assistant yellow, but also can hide the LED strip that we want to tuck on the inside. I chose an 11 by 14 shadow box frame that's about 2.5 to 3 inches thick and comes with a white backer and it has enough of a lip on the front to hide that LED strip. I also decided to use some diffuser material to go over the LED strip to diffuse it a little bit more. The diffuser material just helps ensure that the reflections of the individual LEDs aren't seen because you want to have an even look. I used some PVC backdrop material that I used in my last WLED related video and it seemed to work pretty well. At this point, I would typically start telling you how to flash your controller with WLED, but we're using the Atom controller, so there's no flashing needed. However, we still need to get WLED set up, and to do that, we're gonna to need to apply power. To do that, I'm using a two-wire DC power adapter that I've used in previous videos, and I'll connect the two leads from that to the terminals on the controller. Next, connect the power supply to the DC adapter, and it'll power up your controller. And then you can go ahead and look on your phone or on your PC for a Wi-Fi access point that has WLED in the name. Connect to that access point and type in 1234 for the password if it asks you for one. Once connected, it should show you the WLED welcome screen and from there you should tap the Wi-Fi settings button. In the Wi-Fi settings, you should enter your home network's SSID and password. You can change the MDNS address if you'd rather remember a custom address rather than your IP address for accessing your device later. 
You can also change the AP name for future connection to the device. If this device ever fails to connect to your Wi-Fi for some reason, the controller is gonna broadcast an access point with the name that you put in here, and you'll know which device it is because you've renamed it. Press save and connect, and now the device should connect to your Wi-Fi network. Now you can either install the WLED app on your phone and search for your new device there, or you can just head to a computer and type in the IP or MDNS address of the controller to access it. Next, let's head to the configuration menu and then we're gonna to go to LED preferences. Here, we're gonna give the specifications of our LEDs. You'll see the LED count, but it's not correct, so we're gonna to need to change that later on. If it isn't already, check the enable auto brightness limiter and set the maximum current for close to the maximum that the supply can handle. In my case, I chose a 15 amp power supply, so I'm gonna enter 14,000 milliamps in the box. This is gonna prevent you from making your LED strip too bright and the LED is trying to draw more current than the power supply can handle. Next, it asks you the LED voltage, which is five volts for WS2812Bs. In the hardware setup section, choose WS281X for the LED type and GRB for the color order. Earlier I mentioned that I have about 180 LEDs, but I'm not really sure. I could set it to a lower number, like 170 LEDs, and then when I connect the LED strip, see how many LEDs are off, and then just add that number to the number of LEDs in WLED. Once you're done, scroll down and press the Save button. Now that I have the controller set up, it's time to assemble the rest of the project. First, I remove the back of the shadow box, which is a cardboard rectangle with a piece of quarter inch thick foam adhered to it. Next, I remove the inside spacer and then the glass. We're not gonna use the glass or the spacer for this project, so you're okay to discard them or save them for another project. We're gonna install the LED strip next, which I've already cut to length. I started installing the strip in one corner and then ran it all the way around, keeping it up against the front edge of the frame. Since I used a high density LED strip, you can see that at the corners, it curves a little bit and it doesn't quite fit into those corners, but that's okay, the lip should cover this and you're not gonna see it. The LED strip's connector was gonna be a problem, so I decided to carve a groove into the frame of the shadow box so that it would sit down nicely in it. To secure it, I used my hot glue gun, which I plugged into this super convenient desk grommet that I added to my desk recently. I love this thing. My plan was to move the backer a little bit closer to the front of the frame so I'd have some space behind the backer to mount my controller and some wiring. To do this, I had to make some new notches for the backer clips to slide into. After some messing around with it, I found that one and a quarter inches was a good distance from the inside edge of the frame for those notches. So I drew a line from the edges of the frame all the way around and figured out where those notches should be and then used a utility knife and flathead screwdriver to make them. Testing it out showed that the clips slid in nicely and the backer was a good distance away from the LED strip. At this point, you wanna make sure that you didn't make the backer too close to the LED strip so that you can make out the individual LED reflections on that backer. You want it far enough away so it looks like it's a diffuse light. So now it's time to mount the Home Assistant Yellow. The Yellow has four knurled thumb screws that hold the case together, and I thought that the holes they screwed into would be useful when mounting the Yellow to the backer. I wanted to mount it directly to the center of the backer, so I removed the case and then measured the distance between the holes. I found the center of the backer and then plotted out exactly where the holes should be on the backer. Then I used a power screwdriver to make holes in the backer where the screw should go. I'm gonna leave a link to this little screwdriver in the description because this thing has to be my most useful tool. Anyway, after making the holes, you're gonna notice that the thumb screws for the Home Assistant Yellow are not gonna be long enough to go up through the backer, through the foam, and up through the yellow into the yellow's case and secure it. The thumb screws are M3s, so I picked up a pack of M3 screws on Amazon and ended up using the M3 by 16 screws to secure the yellow in place. Since I didn't buy the PoE, Power Over Ethernet version of the Home Assistant Yellow, I'm gonna have to connect both Ethernet and power to this thing, and I wanna make it look good. To do that, I used a flat white Cat6 cable and a flat white DC power cable, connecting them to the yellow and then running them up the backer and around behind it. This made things really neat and tidy as you can see and actually stuck the two cables to the backer with a little bit of scotch double-sided sticky pads. 
Okay, now that the frame is all assembled, we can connect the controller to the LED strip, which is super easy because we're using the Atom controller. The controller comes with a three-wire connector that'll work nicely to connect our strip. So first, we need to strip the connector wires back a bit and secure them in the screw terminals. There are three wires, a red, a green, and a white. For this strip, the red is the power wire and should be connected to the VCC terminal. The green is the data wire and should be connected to the data terminal. And the white is the ground. The clock terminal isn't used. Once attached to the terminals, I can then connect the strip and restore power to the controller. If you aren't seeing your LED strip light up at this point, you've probably got a wiring problem. After that, we can use some screws or some Scotch double-sided sticky pads to mount the controller to the backer. I use screws because you can always remove them. When doing this, I noticed that the controller was sticking out past the edge of the frame a little bit, but I don't really mind this. If you do have a problem with this, you can always remove the case of the Atom controller, and then the internals of it will sit inside that frame if you use the same dimensions I did. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You can see that it looks pretty awesome. And of course, if I had the PoE version of the Home Assistant Yellow, then it would look even more awesome. My favorite effect to use in this frame is called Sunrise. If you set the palette to rainbow in WLED and then use the Sunrise effect and turn the speed of the effect down to about 50% or less, the effect looks so cool and that's what I'm showing here. Also, don't forget that you don't have to just mount your Home Assistant Yellow in this frame. You could also mount Smart Things or Hubitat Hubs in there as well. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, Feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Now, I am working on a huge comparison video comparing a bunch of different smart bulbs. So definitely subscribe if you want to see more comparison videos like I've been doing. And I am also working on a pixel art part two that covers 32 by 32 pixel art. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you.